who gets lost in a snowstorm. Shirley Jones stars in Visions of Christmas Past, here on Channel 9. For every score, there's a story. Join today's feature is Visions of Christmas Past, starring Shirley Jones. You guys play somewhere else. Can't you read somewhere else? Yeah, we have just as much right to this room as you do. In fact, we have more right, since majority rules. And there are two of us and only one of you. <laughs> Spare me the lesson in democracy, all right? I hate Christmas carols. Scrooge. Hey, I'll tell you what I got if you tell me what you got, okay? How's the goose doing? It's doing just fine. Why don't you use a glass? No reason to get one dirty. I'm not too lazy to wash it if you're not too lazy to use it. Charlotte, you think it'll be ready by 8 o'clock? It will if you stop looking at it every five minutes. Oh, when are um, Lou Armitage and Tracy expected to arrive? They should be here around 4. Mm -hmm. At 5, we have eggnog. 6, we decorate the tree. And at 8, we serve dinner. Sort of a Miller family tradition. Mm -hmm. Honey, that goose has enough problems without you gawking at it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlotte. It's just that well, Christmas Eve dinner was always very special to Jake and me. In that after everyone had eaten, each one of the kids was allowed to open one gift. And I know, and then everybody go to bed so Santa Claus could bring the rest of the presents. Old Miller tradition. Exactly. You know, my family used to do something like that. Only it was ham, not goose. And instead of regular presents, we had stocking stuffings. It's a very special season, isn't it?
Stocking. It's going to be weird to have Christmas without Dad. Hi. Hello, Dad. Well, I guess I've come home. So they left for Madrid. And the last thing Mom wanted was a teenage son around when she got back from our honeymoon. Jake, you never mentioned that Madeline was getting married again. Why would she tell me? She expects me to read about it in the Paris Herald. Besides, I'm all shopped out on wedding gifts. He's only eight years older than I am. And I don't like cigarette ashes in my omelet, thank you. Mm. Sorry. Is he interesting? If you like writers. So anyway, the minute they were gone, I packed up took the shuttle to London and flew here. Well, I'm glad you did. You can share Hem's room. I'll get the extra bed ready. Tomorrow morning, I'll track your mother down, give her a call, tell her you're with us and that you're okay. Don't go to any trouble on my account. All I want is a chance to stay here for a few days. I'm not in the mood for charity from anybody. Billy, uh, I'm your father. That hardly makes you one of New York's neediest cases. The fact that you're my father is a biological accident. As far as I'm concerned, the rest is irrelevant. Thanks for the omelet. Now, whenever my father wanted to talk something over with me, he always took me for a ride. And a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. What? Your analysis of my surly attitude? My insolence? Well, what did you expect after all these years? Andy Hardy comes home? 
I won't tell you what I hoped. Evidently, that's not possible. I will tell you what I expect. Not respect, I hope. Fairness. That's a lot of crap. Perfect. It completes the picture. You abandoned Mom and me. Your mother divorced me and moved to Paris. And you never came to visit. Because she wouldn't let me. Or let you come here. Or have you forgotten? Billy, all I know is that when I opened that door, and you were standing there. I was one of the best moments of my life. Or maybe, uh, maybe we can't be father and son overnight. At least we could try to be friends. No. It's too late. It's all too late. Go ahead. <laughs> You're the only eight-year-old in New York who could make Hello sound like Grand Opera. I thought it was a narcotic squad. What? You know who is doing you know what and you know where. Oh. Just follow your nose. That's a clue. I didn't hear anybody say, come in. I did. Me to you, the night you arrived. This is going to be a sermon. It's not. Just an announcement of obligations and rights. Why do I suspect the rights are all yours? And the obligations all mine? Look, Bill, I'm not your mother, so I can't tell you how to behave. Should I thank you for that? What you do outside this house on your own time is your business. And maybe the laws. But what you do around Michelle and him is very much my business. And there'll be none of that starting right now. Yes, sir. When Dad told me he wasn't sure we could be father and son, he said he wanted to be my friend. Are you going to be my pal, too? Frankly, no. I'm just a little bit tougher than your father. When somebody acts like an arrogant brat around me, I don't reward him with friendship. Mine has to be earned. You really want to know why I came here? When Mom left, I was all alone and... I wanted to find out if I really had a father. Well, I don't. Just some guy who always says the right thing but never means it. Bill, I'm going to share a little secret with you. The only time I ever saw your father cry was five years ago. You were coming to spend the summer with us, and we were going to take you camping. He went out and bought a backpack and spent three weeks filling it with every treasure any 12-year-old would love. A perfect bowie knife, a compass that lit up in the dark, everything. And the morning we were leaving for the airport to pick you up, the phone rang. It was your mother. She canceled the trip. Well... Jake took that backpack and put it in the hall closet. Just stayed there for months and months until finally I just couldn't stand it anymore. And I gave it to charity. Well, that night he, he came home and started to hang his coat up in the closet. He saw it was gone. 
That's when I found him crying. He said it was because then, for the first time, he really knew you weren't coming. find you down here. Does New York need both the great morning newspaper and Deborah? I'm just looking for a game. Sorry. This is strictly a solo performance. I'm sorry I missed you at breakfast this morning. I wanted to tell you about Tahoe. I was awake last night when you came home, and I heard all I need to. I'm sure you'll all be one big happy family in that second-rate pig town. I can't understand why you care whether Tahoe is a first-rate or a tenth-rate town. Or whether I can convince Shirley to even try it, since you can't wait to leave this family. That uh, was your decision, wasn't it? it? certainly wasn't mine. If I had my way, which of course I don't, this would have been a fresh start for us. If I had known you were awake last night, I'd have put my proposition to you right then. You and me? Friends? Father and son? Partners? Want to play? You mean that? Of course I do. You give me a minute to warm up, I'll put that ball where you'll never even touch it. About Tahoe. I never meant anything more in my life. gates open Saturday night as top trotters and pacers return to the Meadowlands. Come to America's This one's underwear. For sure. This one's too light for a book. Too heavy for clothes. Oh, hi, Mom. No peeking. No peeking. Well, we were just, um, shaking. There'll be plenty of time for that later. Right now, I'd like you to help us unpack the rest of the ornaments. Okay. Come on. Do you want me to whip up something real fast for Bill? I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> for a part-time domestic, you're still pretty mean with a needle and thread. <laughs> Christmas brings out the best in me. I'm not going to hang it now. I'm going to keep it as a surprise for after dinner. newspaper. It's right over there. There's one more Miller family tradition that I have to deal with. Oh? What tradition is that? I can't believe we missed one. <laughs> Buying the Christmas tree. <laughs> I was wondering when you folks were going to get around to that little item. You know, Ms. Miller, you and I really haven't known each other all that long. Almost never got to know each other at all, if you recall. Now, this is what is known as the master suite. 
a fancy name for a plain old bedroom and a... Mrs. McKenna. No, no, just call me Charlotte. Charlotte, I, I don't think I'll be able to... Mrs. Miller, the previous owner, a nice old couple in their 90s, paid me till the end of the month. You have until then to decide whether or not you want me to stay. And don't make a mistake you'll regret. This house won't run without me. I thought this room might be nice for the little one. I mean, in a half. Oh, as I was saying, this room would be perfect for young ladies such as yourself. Knew you folks were coming today. Got a call from the moving van people about your furniture. They said something about being just outside of Texas. Texas? Well, now, I don't know if they were going into Texas or coming out of Texas. Engine trouble, they said. Now, this room is a mite larger than that last one, but I thought it would work out fine for the boy and that animal. His name is Oregano. Italian, is it? Well, you just make sure you clean him good before you bring him in. I don't want tracks all over my clean floors. Well, my floor's till the end of the month, that is. Now, this is the second bathroom. Toilet runs a little, so you have to jiggle a handle after every use. And here is another bedroom. Used to be the sewing room. But I suppose somebody could sleep in it if they wanted to. Deborah. Talkative, isn't she? She has her moods. Well, I thought she was about that age. You know, I wasn't expecting four kids. So I'm afraid you're going to have to take the leaving, son. Now, this room down here needs the most work. But it's private. Well? There's some other things you should know. You didn't understand. I can't afford help, especially full-time hired help. You're talking cash money? Yeah, yes. There is no cash money. Because, frankly, you can't afford not to have me. Just how much is afford? Fifty dollars a week. That plus room and board. Rock bottom, firm. Take a look in that oven. <laughs> Juiciest roast you ever put your teeth into. And them popovers. Sheer heaven. And I'm given to understatements. It looks delicious, but I just can't have... Good thing not a souffle in there. Stand aside. You see, it's all in the timing. Supple ankles played hockey as a girl. Now, that oven is just one of the temperamental modern appliances in this house. Modern? House needs $10,000 worth of work right now. Now that's why you can't afford to let me go. Hot water heater needs coaxing every day or two. But it's a snap compared to the furnace. And then there's the fuse box. There isn't any money. None at all. No sense wasting time here, jabbing. I'll be over at my sister's place. Number's right up here. But I won't move all my things, just in case you come to your senses. Pack this just in case. Always pays to be prepared. Feel free to use my bed. <clears throat> Been waiting for your call. Never figured you'd be able to last this long without me. <laughs> You're so right, Charlotte. See you in the morning. In the morning. Mrs. Miller. Almost never got to know each other at all, if you recall. Um, I don't want to seem too presumptuous, but I... What is it, Charlotte? Well, would you mind terribly if I put this up with the rest of the families? Charlotte. Oh, I insist on it. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. Keep it festive, you two. I'm going in search of a rare Christmas tree. Good luck. We've got plenty to keep us busy. You're not going out dressed like that, are you? The temperature's been dropping all day, Mrs. Miller. Now, a cold will keep out the chill. I'll be all right. I'm not going to be gone long enough to catch cold. Merry Christmas, ma'am. Merry Christmas. 
Wasn't expecting anyone else today. Just about ready to close up shop. Not much to choose from, is there? Lucky to have this many left. Mighty late in the season for you to be shopping for a tree. Took you a while to get in the mood, huh? Oh, not exactly. See, when my husband and I were first married, we didn't have much money, so we always bought our Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. It became a family tradition. Sort of like buying day-old bread. Sort of. Well, find one you like? Oh, I'm not sure. Buying a Christmas tree was very important to my husband and me. It was like buying a new car or a new house. I like to take my time. Be sure I make the right decision. Nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Your secretary said it was urgent. Urgent doesn't even begin to describe. Try fantastic or terrific. Try... Just try telling me what it is. Well, the answer to our dilemma. We are moving to the west. Become cattle barons. Well? I'm waiting. I mean, I hope this is one of your jokes. Uh, aren't you going to ask me to pull out a cap gun and help you stick up the Fifth Avenue stage? Uh, this time, this time I am absolutely serious. This is not a joke. I didn't say ridiculous. I said foolhardy. To invest our entire life savings, which unless you have a secret account somewhere, comes to $7,200. Well, it's all your farm and that's... You haven't been on a farm for... Ranch. Ranch. You haven't been on one for 25 years. It's like riding a bicycle. You never really forget. That's another thing. Riding a bicycle is something else I could never do. Well, I suppose it's too late to institutionalize you. I should have done that when you decided to marry Jake. In this market, Mr. Miller, it may take me a few hours to sell it. Well, I figured since we're moving to Tahoe, we might as well get started. Perfect evening. And it's not over. Oh? The best is yet to come. We are going to open a bottle of the most extravagantly expensive wine and sit in front of the fireplace. The fireplace, of course. we have to practice. There are four fireplaces in the Victorian. Long, snowy nights in Tahoe. To Tahoe. No. To New York. A fond farewell. Well, it is where we met, fell in love, where you proposed. Nope, you proposed. I distinctly remember. Is that what you told the boys at the office? No marriage is like a trapeze act. Here I am asking you to do a triple somersault without a net. All I can do is promise to be there to catch you. Ma'am, ma'am, I appreciate the importance of you finding just the right tree, ma'am. But the day's getting shorter, and the selection isn't getting any bigger. I'm sorry. All right, I, I'll take this one. Good choice. I do appreciate you selling it to me for half price. The least I could do, ma'am, considering the spirit of the season and all. Which direction are you headed? North end of the lake, toward Kings Beach. Save yourself 20 minutes taking a shortcut right out that road there. It's narrow in spots, but it doesn't get much traffic this time of year. They usually close it during snow season. It's open now? 
probably the last day if it starts snowing again like they're predicting. Just drive it slow, look for ice patches, and you'll be sitting at home in the front of the fire drinking eggnogs before you know it. You talked me into it. Merry Christmas. Thank you. And to you, man. Time Magazine. The Alltronic Designer Telephone will impress your friends and clients and brighten any room in your home or office. So will Time Magazine. The Designer Telephone is free when you subscribe to Time. The free Designer Phone comes in four exciting colors. A rich red, a great gray, a beautiful blue, and a wonderful white. Time Magazine comes in exciting full color, so you get a true picture of all the news every week. The Ultronic Telephone features exceptional communications technology. So does Time Magazine. With correspondence all over the world and the immediacy of satellite communications, Time gives you the story when you want it. They put it all right in your hands, so you can turn to Time anytime to get a clear, concise perspective that only Time can give you. And only Time gives you this free Ultronic Designer Telephone with great features like memory redial of the last number called and a mute button to keep your conversations private. With Time Magazine, you get in on all the conversations, so you're always on the inside. The designer telephone has full-sized push buttons for that perfect touch. Time touches you, bringing people closer, so you can feel what they feel and share their emotions and celebrations. So, call this toll-free number now and get your Ultronic designer telephone free with your paid subscription to Time at a savings of over 40% off the cover price. You get 26 issues of time, payable in three monthly installments of only $9.89 each. With your designer telephone, you save on monthly phone rental charges. With Time Magazine, you get convenient home delivery. Call now, and soon you can be making calls on your very own designer phone. It's free from Time. Call 1-800-274-9300 and get your free phone and save on Time. Pick a color. It's free. father showed us didn't do the place justice. Maybe we should have moved into the brochure. Looks kind of old, big, spooky. Who used to live here? The Adams family? Tomorrow, if we're lucky. I 
I'll believe this myth. What are we, cattle that you can herd from one spot to another? Hey, don't take it out on me. I'm just the messenger. Since we're packing anyway, maybe we can go all the way back to New York. Don't count on it. What can I count on? Beats me. Just because the termites moved in, I don't know why we have to move out. I feel like a bellboy. Never too young to learn a trade. Would you light a fire under him and Michelle? We have a lot of work to do before it gets dark. Why George hasn't written me. Maybe he doesn't know how to address his letters. After all, what's the zip code for a tent? Mom, we go fishing tomorrow? We'll see. That yes, we'll see, or no, we'll see. It's we'll see. I think I'll get ready for bed. What was that? Probably just Bigfoot. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> I think I'll stay up a while longer. Hey, Deb. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, hand me the tongs, honey. Uh, okay. Here. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. What's wrong? That creepy little brother of mine was spying on me. Was not. I was digging worms like Dutch taught me. You were watching me take a bath. I'd rather dig worms. Oh, Put ew. that down and go and dig someplace else. You calm down and go and get dressed, please. Why don't you write George about it? Don't think I won't creep. Boy, if only I was 18 and independently wealthy, had my own airplane and didn't have to do what I was told. Ham, get in here and clean up your junk. Leave him alone. The kids are helping your mom clean up the campfire. Besides, I want to talk to you. There's another thing that bugs me. You're always saying your mom to me like, your sunburned nose or your case of chicken pox. Oh, yeah? Well, you always make this family sound like some sort of closed corporation that only belongs to you. We had the same father, remember? But you don't work too hard at trying to be part of this family yourself. I must be losing my sight faster than I thought. Dodge, would a flashlight help? <laughs> you must be kidding, Mrs. Miller. There's enough light pouring through your roof that I need sunglasses. Dutch, please don't make jokes. Who's joking? As far as I can see, the only thing standing between you and rain is it ain't raining. You mean that roofing man I had here yesterday wasn't exaggerating? No. The fact of the matter is, if he gave you an estimate for a new roof of $2,200, he's given you a great deal. Dutch, a great deal is only great if you can afford it. We'll have to find a cheaper way. I'm a long way from being able to afford $2,200. Son of a gun! I can see my place from here. I don't know why I'm even bothering. I don't get a chance to wear this stuff again. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, tell me what it is and I'll let you know. Plaster from the ceiling. Mom! Um, honey, uh, put it in a safe place and I'll take care of it later. I tell you, when we first moved to Tahoe, I never thought it would turn out like this. Now I can hardly remember living anywhere else. I have out some music. Good idea. Don't you guys believe in a Christmas tree? Of course we do. That's where Mom is right now. I'll find one. <laughs> and in keeping with the spirit of the season, our weather satellite shows that we'll definitely have a white Christmas in the Lake Tahoe area. And now, All right, a white Christmas. Christmas. <laughs>
I said, are you okay? Fine. Well, then release your hood. What are you doing? Oh, Pam! Pam! Pam, come back here! You sure you're all right? Fine, except I have this problem with crazy truck drivers. Get excited. Nobody's hurt. I've got insurance. It looks like we can both drive away from here and the horn stops, so... That's your version. My son and my dog are God knows where. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to try and find my child and my dog. Oregano! Come back! Oregano! 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 Ham? Are you all right? I'm not crying. She <laughs> anything. Oh, honey, it's all right, even if you were. I know you miss oregano, and... I know it hasn't been easy for you getting used to Tahoe. But you know you can count on me, and I promise things are going to get better. I know. It's just... I really miss that. I really do. <laughs> and if you were here, everything would be... I know. It hurts so much, sometimes I cry, too. I'm sorry for being such a baby. That's Michelle. I should be helping. Never be ashamed of your feelings, Ham. They're honest feelings, especially for your father. He's worth remembering, worth having feelings for. You want to know something else? I think you're going to grow up to be just like him. Do you think so? Absolutely. minute she got home from school. I guess I know the beginning of the flu when I see it. I wish they would make a thermometer a normal human being could read. I can't tell whether this is 100 even or 42. We're in the middle of rehearsals. I'm not sick. I'm just flushed with excitement. Then I guess there's nothing to worry about. Right. But in the meantime, it's soup and tea for you. Do you stay with her for a few minutes, Charlotte. I want to phone Dr. Barnes. I'm sure this is the first case of flush with excitement he's ever seen. Should be very interesting for him. <laughs> I'll give her an alcohol rub. Cool her right off. Enjoy the service while it lasts. Tomorrow, you'll be back in the kitchen helping me with the dishes. It's time for your holiday food fair. Remember? I know Jake couldn't save two nickels. Did you know that he put everything he had into that Tahoe house? How much do you have in the checking account? A few hundred. Well, the firm has agreed to pay his salary for a couple of months. His salary was nothing. All of Jake's income came from commissions. Well, I'm afraid your only asset then is that Tahoe house. How soon do you have to be out of the apartment? Got the lease back. Only for 90 days. I'll call the Tahoe broker who sold Jake the house. See how quickly he can turn it over and we'll buy you a good solid annuity for that. And get you a teaching job. 
Your credentials current? Yes. All right. Find you a new apartment. I've uh, been waiting for a cable from Madeline about Bill. I wired her about Jake and asked her to send a plane ticket. Wait, wait a minute, Arthur. This is just whizzing by me. I... Bill is... You want him to go back to Paris? Well, yes, to his mother. Shirley, he's not your son. But he's Jake's son. I can't just abandon him. But where will you put him? You can't afford an apartment large enough. You can't afford to put him through school. Now, it's not a question of abandoning him. It's a lawyer's rationalizing, Arthur. I call it abandoning. I call it reality. Well, I just happen to have a conscience. That's great, but your checkbook doesn't. If I have to send Jake's son away to some place he hates so much, Arthur, he ran away from that woman. Then something is terribly wrong. There is, Shirley. And that, so they say, is the hell of it. Don't look at me. I'm only eight years old. you to drop by to wish us well. The Dunkirk evacuation wasn't carried out with this much secrecy. I'm surprised I didn't get a postcard. Hi, we've moved to Tahoe, our new address. I was going to call you in a few minutes. I'll just tote this barge on down to the truck. Excuse me. Arthur, this is a well thought out decision. Bunk. And I want you to know I'm thinking much worse. School semester starts in three weeks. I have a teaching job. So if it's so well thought out, why wouldn't you even discuss it with your own brother? Because you're just too persuasive. You would have had a dozen different reasons why we shouldn't go. Arthur, if Jake's plan was right when he was alive, it's even more right now that he's... Well, now that we're alone. Shirley, did you ever think that it might have been wrong when Jake was alive? No. Tahoe is Jake's legacy to us. It's a romantic fantasy. Totally impractical, indefensible. It's what my life with Jake was all about, and it's the one thing I won't let go of. That and Jake's children. All of them. Bill is not your... Responsibility. No, he's not. He's only Jake's son. Oh, Arthur, please try and understand. Well, sometimes if I sound like a big brother, it... Well, it's because I am. Oh, I know, I know, and I love you for it. You better go now before I start to cry. You come visit us Christmas. Only if you'll promise to come home if this doesn't work out. It won't be a failure, just a wrong choice. Never a disgrace to come home. Tahoe is home now. I'm not going to fail, Arthur. I've got perseverance. All right, Shirley, you got yourself into this mess. I see you get yourself out. be right back and stay away so long. Maybe she stopped at the store for something or had to get gas. She'll be back any second. Yeah, no sense worrying. Your mother knows how to take care of herself. Mm. And those two, have you tasted this? 
Of course I have. Now, don't go hogging it all to yourself. Remember, you got guests. That's heavy. Now, be careful. It's delicious. I know. Mm -hmm. She probably just got sidetracked. Nope. Mom would have called us. Maybe she ran out of gas. Why is it every time a woman is late, a man wonders if she's run out of gas? It was just an idea. You know, we're going to have to get acquainted, you and I. We know so little about each other. Anytime you want to talk anything out or you need anything, different than living in a New York brownstone, isn't it? I'm more used to flats in Paris. I had a quick look at your room. A little paint, a few pictures, maybe even some posters. I think it'd be very nice. Look, you don't have to go to any trouble on my account. Why not, Bill? I split from my mother and hitched up with dad and you guys in New York. I never planned on anything permanent. I see. The only reason I hung in this long is because dad died. Figured I'd stick, you know, in case you needed some help. But you got things under control. No reason me taking up your space. We have an abundance of space, Bill. When do you plan to leave? I don't know. As soon as I figure out where I'm going, I guess. What do you want to talk about anyway? I'm about as needed around here as a fistful of thumbs. You feel that way? Why don't you talk to my... to Mom? I got my own problems. I can't talk to her. What am I going to say? That she's putting up with me just because of Dad? What am I doing here? I keep asking myself that. You sound like you're planning to split. I've been thinking about it. Seriously thinking about it. Bill, I want to talk to you. I'm very tired, so I'll probably say this badly. Did you really come because of me? Arthur was right. He said I chose Tahoe so that you could stay with us. There were other reasons, but you did make the difference. But, Bill, whatever you're feeling and thinking now, you're not a charity case. I never could have made it, not for one day without your help. Your father said he wanted you to be his partner in Tahoe. You've been mine. Believe me, a good one. Thanks. Honey, we, all of us, love you very, very much. Yeah? Are you decent? I'm dressed that that's what you mean. Not much into the spirit. <laughs> well, get into it. Well, this is a season to be jolly, isn't it? That's the rumor. Well, I've heard about people who get depressed at holidays. You miss your father, don't you? It's hard to miss somebody you hardly knew. Yeah, I miss him. It's 
sort of feel like an uninvited guest too. All the Miller family traditions I never heard of. The whole thing just feels weird. Well, not to me. I love it. You know what? This is the first time I've ever been in your room. It's kind of nice. <laughs> it works. You know, by all rights, I shouldn't even be spending any time with you. What's that supposed to mean? Remember Margo? <laughs> You're supposed to be cheering me up, not making things worse. Oh, come on, Bill. She wasn't that bad. I mean, she was attractive, right? And so what if she had a few shortcomings? They weren't too hard to overlook. Excuse me, are you really from Paris? Yeah, I've lived there for 12 years. And now I live here. Well, I was wondering, is that why your hair is so long? Long hair is just so out here. Thanks, I'll learn so soon. Well, my name's Margot Eldridge. If you read English, I'm in the phone book. Swell. If we decide to get a phone, I may call. project partners in the science project? Oh, uh, after that bad beginning with the garbage pails in September. Oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. And I understand why you were so unfriendly. Oh, not that you were really unfriendly. Just a little... Well, anyway, to, to work together and, and to have the chance to become friends. So what do you think we should do for this project? Well, last summer in New Mexico, I learned how to hang glide. You know how to hang glide? Sure. Well, so what do you think? I mean, the way a glider works. I mean, I sure don't know why it stays up there and I'm hanging on to it. Some color pictures. Maybe build a model. Could be absolutely terrific. Yeah. Well, now all we have to do is figure out why it flies. Patty, four o'clock. Floor's done I'm leaving. Well, so when can we meet again and get started on it? I mean, I've never gotten an A on a project in my life. But with you as a partner, I feel lucky. Was someone picking you up? Nah, I guess not. Oh, I can walk you partway to your house. It's on the way to my house. I mean, I, I don't know exactly where you live, but, but I'm sure it's near... I've never known anybody to say I mean as much as you do. <laughs> well... Well, that's because, well, what I mean is, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what, the mountain's opening on Saturday, and if you'd like to go, I can get us passes, free. Well, all my equipment is with my mom in Paris. Well, you can rent some, cheap, I, I could get you a deal. See you later. I'm not late. I just had to go around the block. Because I couldn't stop while this song was playing. Oh! <laughs> Let me know about Saturday. Hello. Attaching the sleeve is not the most difficult process. 
problem. It's remembering not to sew the armhole together. So, once that's corrected, Kathy, this will be ready for somebody's spring collection. That's not for any spring collection, unless it's a fashion show for lumberjacks. I just hope it's not for anybody we know, like Bill Miller. Because he's seriously involved with someone. Really? Who? Me. If I decide I want him, and if I do, nobody had better pull a stunt like uh, paying someone $5 to trade science project partners. I didn't want to stay in this crummy school anyway. Well, I hate to disappoint you, Tracy, but you're not expelled. You're on probation. So is Margot. Margot, too? You're both equally guilty of unacceptable behavior. But Margot's a wheel. And her dad, he's on the school board. You're just as important to this school as she is. And for a minute, I thought somebody around this place was talking straight to me. But to call me important to this school... That's all just a horse maneuver. You can call it whatever you want. Look, Tracy, life just won't work if you go around abusing each other with words or flower pots. Well, then why'd you stick up for me? Because I hate privilege. Well, whatever you did it for. Thanks. I still have to speak to your parents about what happened. She doesn't have any parents. She sure as hell has a brother. Well, Tracy and I had the same mother, but different fathers. That's why... Different last names. Right. Anyway, my dad died. My mom went to work for a while. Tracy was about 12, and I was just fresh home from Nam. We decided to hang out together. Summers, I work on the rodeo circuit, so we travel a lot. In fact, a year ago, we made it to New York, Madison Square Garden. And winters, I uh, teach skiing and work in the ski shop. It's not such a bad life, is it? No, it's not. Except for the school, of course. Tracy's very bright, you know. Have you seen her test scores? Tracy and I have a deal. She doesn't ask about my love life, and she gets to sign her own report cards. <laughs> that will have to change. You mean you want her involved in my love life? I think you know what I mean. Well, now that we have a common cause, I guess we're friends. I like that. <laughs> Bill's at work. I know. Well, since you happen to be in the neighborhood, why don't you tell me what's on your mind? Oh, not much. That's the first time I've ever heard Bill Miller described as not much. Oh. Does it show? Well, I've had a clue or two. You have that look that either means infatuation or you've been hit by a truck. Well, what I'd like is to... to te <sighs> Beat him up? I don't think he'd enjoy that. Well, it's just... I, I plan all these terrific things to tell him and then when I see him, my brain turns to jello. I hear the words coming out and even to me they sound terrible. Well, why don't you tell me what you want to say? Ask him to the high school dance. I happen to know that he doesn't have a date. Uh, that's not a yes. It's just a statement of availability. Well, even if he did say yes, I don't have anything to wear. Honey, women never have anything to wear. And I can't dance. Well, he's not so terrific either. So far, that makes you the couple of the year. 
Do you think I should chance it? Absolutely. It's less risky than hang gliding and a lot more fun. And so what if she had a few shortcomings? They weren't too hard to overlook. I mean, things really could be worse. It could be Margot standing here with you, instead of teary old me. You want to tell me what's bothering you? Well, frankly, you are. Me? You really gave Margot the shaft. Was that her story? That's everybody's story. Bill, I think for once she was treated fairly instead of having... What is it that you have against her? I just don't think she's as terrific as you do. Maybe I've misjudged her. I know she's very beautiful, but what else? You make it sound like a crime that she's beautiful. No, the crime is what she does with it. I happen to think she's insufferably conceited and shallow. Well, I don't. Then obviously one of us should take another look. I hope it's you. You told me once you wouldn't boss me around because you're not my mother. Maybe it's time you remember that. Ten minutes and we never make the movie. Forget the movie. I've got better news. My parents went to San Francisco for the weekend. And we've got the house all to ourselves. Don't you understand? The house. Alone. Maybe you enjoy getting frostbite in this car, but I do not. Isn't there anything else? <laughs> you know what I mean. Bad mouthing Shirley every time you get the chance. And then coming around here whenever you feel like and expecting me to drop everything. Right. I've noticed how much you hate it. Lucky I carry a pistol so I can force you into it. The point is, everybody wants to be with someone he cares about. Well, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you coming with me or not? Not this time, Margo. It could be Margo standing here with you. Instead of cheery old me. <laughs> you know something, Trace? I'm glad that you're my friend. Well, does that mean you're finally getting into the spirit? You got it, pal. Let's party. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your family a happy Hanukkah holiday from all of us here at Channel 9. Okay, who's next? What's wrong? Mom's not back yet. And she's been gone a long time. Then let's go look for her. Lou? Do you have any idea where she was buying the tree? Oh, give me the paper. Give me the paper. Right here, what's left of it? Christmas trees. Look, there's a mark by this one. And that's the one we'll start with. 158 Mountain View Road. Got it. Okay. I'm going with you. No reason to, Hem. We'll be back with Mom before you know it. Besides, I might have to get more wood for the ladies.
with Mom's a pair of slippers. She'll like that. I got her a keychain with her initials. She'll like that, too. Think so? Mm-hmm. Sure wish we could give her her presents right now. Okay. Thank you, officer. But if you do hear anything... Okay, we will. Merry Christmas to you, too. Bye. Nothing? Nothing. No reports of accidents, no Shirley Miller, no nothing. Okay, well, let's try the hospitals. Bye. Five, five, five. Oh, seven, seven, one. Mrs. Miller can't be calling in if you ladies keep calling out. It's the ring already. Oh, there she is. Say something wrong? We fought you and Mom. Looks like we missed the Christmas rush. Yeah. Now what do we do? Work our way back to your place, I guess. <sighs> hey, stop looking so worried, Bill. I'll bet you dollars to donut Shirley's already back home, got the tree all decorated, and is building up a full head of anger at us for holding up dinner. You think so? <sighs> First we bet. Then we go home and I collect from you. You can call it the tyranny of peer group pressure, or I'm the only 10-year-old boy in my class who doesn't ski. Now, the second title, I understand. Well, bring him around. I'll be glad to take him out next Sunday. Not quite that simple, but thank you. Does he need equipment? Everything. Oh. These all look so new. And expensive. It's not a couple of barrel stays tied to your sneakers. Just how much is expensive? Uh, I'm prepared to talk secondhand, battered secondhand. Well, you got boots, bindings, poles, skis, decent parka. Uh, wait a minute, please. He's not trying out for the cover of Gentleman's Quarterly or Sports Illustrated. Probably comes to two fifty. Oh. Maybe two and a quarter. Might as well be twenty five hundred. That bad, huh? Well, I guess there's only one answer. Bonnie and Clyde, you and me, kid, we'll start small. I'll knock over a gas station, and I think I better be the getaway driver, given your recent driving record. Come on now, let's 
Let's practice this. Here, you put this on and shout, stick them up. <laughs> I know some of my jokes aren't too funny, but I've never gotten this reaction before. Oh, it's, uh, it's just somebody else used to... I guess I'm just a sucker for whimsy. No, here, oh. please. Not that. to be sure that dinner was served at exactly 8 o'clock. Well, it's not good to break a tradition as important as that. I guess I'll put this back in the oven, keep it warm. Are you positive you checked every Christmas tree lot in Tahoe? Didn't miss a one. Most of them were already closed. Ones who were open didn't remember seeing Shirley. Our best shot was that Joe's Christmas tree for him. But there wasn't anybody there. And no sign of Shirley. I wish it wouldn't snow on Christmas. I swear it's a futile effort. Hmm? Everything's gone down. Being a stockbroker these days is not unlike being the ticket agent for the Titanic. Of course, I am a crackerjack broker. I mean, most would take three or four days to run a man's fortune into a shoestring. I, on the other hand, can do that in about a single afternoon. Oh! Michelle? Do you know how rotten schools are? I have eighth graders who are functional illiterates. Well, that's why you're a volunteer. But I always assure people that you are not to blame. And the suburbs aren't the answer. What you don't need every day is a two-hour commute. <sighs> if you're really scared, we could put the kids in a private school. If we stretched. Stretched? Cause us to cut down on luxuries a little bit, like food. I could always get a full-time teaching job. Mm hmm. Do you remember when you gave me this? Graduation gift. Me to you for supporting us while I got my MBA. I taught exactly one semester in New Jersey. And even the illiterates thought you were terrific.
Mom wanted to surprise you with this herself. But I don't think she'd mind if I gave it to you now. I say we go out and give things another look, see. Where, Dutch? We tried every tree lot. Well, this, this, this is Joe's Xmas tree farm. Did you drive up the front two-lane road or the back route? What back route? Well, the one that cuts through the mountain instead of going around it. There's lots of traffic during Prohibition, but now there's just a few loggers, kids necking, few folks who know that shortcut. Might be worth a try. Anything beats sitting around here doing nothing. Pam. No, this time I'm going. I won't get in your way. I promise. I know you want, son. Bill, wait a second. It's a pneumonia-like virus that is unresponsive to antibiotics. We have her on a water mattress trying to bring her temperature down.
Mr. Bates. Surely, I'm afraid it's bad news. I'm afraid it's Jake. He had a heart attack this afternoon in the office. He's all right. He's going to be all right. He's dead, Charlie. Oh. 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 That's ridiculous. Uh, uh, it's one of Jake's jokes, isn't it? This time it's not funny. It's just not funny, Jake. Jake. Jake, where are you? Get out of here, Jake. This is not Jake. Where are you, Jake? <laughs>
honey. Shirley, are you okay? Oh, yes. I'm fine. Thank God you found me. Did you see the Christmas tree? Oh, it's a dandy, Miss Miller. The finest Christmas tree I ever saw. Here, Shirley, this is for you. Oh, sweet honey. Can it wait? Miller family traditions are not to be broken. Oh. Oh. Come on, you got a house full of folks looking forward to seeing you. Christmas music. I thought you hated Christmas music. I finally just learned to appreciate it. Oh! Shirley? Thanks. My pleasure, Bill. I want to thank all of you for, well, just everything. Turned out to be the best Christmas of all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Dice. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry Christmas.